What is that? Ghost. Ghost dog. Hi. Ghost dog. That was a good movie. It had that. Uh, got one eye different than the other and he's black and kind of heavyweight but uh fucking amazing actor what's that guy's name anyway ghost dog was brilliant i really like that one i bet you nobody's even seen that movie except me and uh but uh, i really like that one i like all the other stuff too but Fuck! I really wish sometimes that things would be a lot easier. Oh, fuck. It's all right. If I didn't know any better, I wouldn't know any better. It's probably better if I didn't know any better. Well, maybe tomorrow I'll get the shit done that I was supposed to get done today, and I didn't. I, uh, am pretty tired out, actually, from everything, and, uh, if I wasn't out of food, and I might be out of cash, which... Limits the ability to get food. <laughs> uh, anyway, I gotta see if I can plan a trip to town tomorrow and get some big things done. Well, one big thing, and then whatever the hell else I can get done. I'm still experimenting with having fires and not having fires and seeing how cold it gets or not gets, you know, and I think it's really great to almost set a ratio of how many nights to have a fire. I can make a formula for it. This is a great idea. Uh, you should write this down and you can name it the formula for fires and you can adjust it according to you. You can give me credit if you want. I don't give a fuck. Just let's get better at having fires, okay? So here we go. This is your free thoughts from Brian, as usual. Um, most people, first of all, don't use fire currently to heat their homes. And that is because they are living off totally unsustainable resources that are fucking the entire planet up. And wood as, is actually a renewable resource. Especially if you were to combine it with digging into the slope, using the sun, and then using... Special, you know, like greenhouse type walls, that's one thing, but also using other options. Geothermal is one. Even just digging in is already geothermal, so that's going to balance you out. And then any wood that you burn, any garbage you burn, anything you ever burn should always be burned in a place that it pr produces heat in the building if your general goal is to heat it up during that season in that place, and I realize that varies widely. And so wildly different plans have to be, get made as, as far as how we deal architecturally with places. On the other hand, let's disagree with what I just said. Let's just assume that's what most people would think. They would think, of course, you would make different architecture in different climates. Maybe you should think of the ultimate architecture that would work in dang near every climate, as varied as it can be, okay? You know, looking at past ice ages and the evolution of humanity and the evolution of all species and say, hey, let's dig in and build complex underground bunkers that allow for actually quite a bit of wildlife to exist including humans, 
the most dangerous kind of you know wildlife there is. We are so wild, and uh, and I, I did mention concrete as a material. It can be done differently. But the point is to dig in and, and control water flow. And this can be done all over the world. But obviously, places like where I live, the ideal place, the subtropics, is the best. Because you can easily mimic very cold places that are dry, very cold places that are wet, very hot places that are humid, very hot places that are dry. Meaning you can easily build into, like, with Wally Peenies and stuff like that. If you look at Brian Fay, F-E-Y. It's not even pronounced that way, by the way. My name's actually pronounced Brian Fay, which no one knows except people I went to high school with. Or junior high or whatever. But, no, I changed it because I just gave up. Fuck it. It was too hard to correct people. So, they win. Anyway, but we can easily grow in the subtropics. A lot of very tropical things, a very a lot of other types of everything. And that's by sculpting the land in a really intense way. I see things growing in courtyards like citrus around here that I don't see just growing in orchards. People don't grow them in orchards because the courtyard provides a protection from the wind and it, and it soaks up the power of the sun and maybe there's a little more water in there because there's wastewater from the home. I don't know. The point is, is that if we sculpt the land, really thinking of it as a large-scale sculpture, and we might even use bulldozers for this kind of stuff. I mean, there's places where they're restoring land that they've used bulldozers, and, and that is worth it. Because they've already destroyed it, and so they might as well sculpt it again and then replant it, and they might as well sculpt it better before they replant it. Well, in this case, I've got a place that's a restoring forest, and I'm doing it bit by bit in a weird way. So there's a really different set of actions you would take if you were restoring totally deforested land. And I do, you know, I do fantasize about that. Like, what if in western Oregon there was a big clear cut in the mountains between the valley and the coast, and it was a really cool spot? You know, maybe it was Weyerhaeuser land, or I don't know who owns land down there, but... I look on Google Earth and I see these just clear-cut places. What if I just analyzed all the slopes in all of those and said, wow, this one's really great, that one's really great, this one's really great, that one sucks, and this one's not connected anywhere enough, but that one's too connected and has too much value. And I can figure out, you know, on that whole coastal range, it would be really exciting to say, how could we actually have a bunch of connected communities that were all replanted? with the most amazing plants you can imagine, and we also got really good at doing greenhouses. Now, Oregon's a tough one for me. I like Oregon, but uh, it's pretty cold. So I'm interested in the greenhouses people live in. I want to live in a greenhouse. That's it. I like greenhouses. I had nice first dates on in a greenhouse up at uh, the Conservatorium and Volunteer Park in Seattle. It's a great place to take a first date. You know, you look at plants. You go to a park. It's nice and safe, and everybody feels happy, and you chat about things, and you see weird shit and comment on it and have a shared experience, and you walk up the tower thing and go look at the water thing and the sculpture thing, and, you know, and... Yeah, I think I had, like, probably, I don't know, I wouldn't even know, five or ten first dates there, and then certainly more times I just went there with people in general. But I've probably been there 40 times, I bet. But that's my thinking is that, you know, and I think about this building, it's an interesting building, but we'll skip the analysis on that one, but everything's got to be sculpted into the land. We have to dig in and then build it over to capture the sun into the earth. I think that's the, that's almost a metric. We could say how many how many um, minute surface areas beyond the glass. I, sciencey people can help me out with this. Okay, fix fix up what I'm saying. Okay, smart fuckers. How how can I measure the room such I know how much radiation entered it and how much I can capture in heat and. You know, should I be having that building be painted like super black? 
and just make it so that sun comes in through these these uh, you know windows and they superheat this very black room, and then I just suck all the heat out of that and pump it into the building some other way, hopefully going upward since heat likes to go up. And I'd like to make whole buildings such that heat goes up through it. And also, coolness goes up through it when we want to. And I think we should build really both those systems. I've thought about this a little bit. and I'm always biased towards where I live, right? I'm always biased. Oh, this is where I live. I should do this thing. Well, what if, uh, what if I don't know what the building will need to be in 600 years? I'll tell you this. Everything has to be built in. Dig it in like a bunker. Invest your money into the thing that can pay off the best. Dig it in heavily and probably probably buying some guns. But that's a whole other conversation. But as, as, as societies around the world, no matter where you are, well, in some cases, you, you should just move. I mean, I'm sorry. If you live on an island, don't be surprised if hurricanes make your island go away. That shit's going to happen. And also there's a other problem of like 80% of the population of the world lives in the coastlines. And those coastlines, even if they were to be eroded, let's say 20%, that would cause a bigger crisis than any war we've ever had anywhere in the world so far. Although we're working on having you know bigger wars. Get off the coastline. Get off the coastline. Wait, wait. I, I, why is there never a headline that just says, get off the fucking coastline? I mean, keep industry on it. Keep shipping on it. Keep uh, vacation spots on it. Uh, keep fishing and I, whatever, you know. But uh, if your house is on the coastline... It's going to fall into the ocean. And it's not like you weren't told. You were told by me right now. You heard it. I can guarantee you heard it since you're listening to this. That's a 100% proof. Oh my God, I'm so sore. It's, it feels great. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, don't fall over. Um, I've been really good at not falling over. I'm so, like, careful about not doing that because I live in a fucking place that is the ideal place to just fall all over shit, you know? You just... And everything is a fucking rocky trail or a hazard or shit that moved around or the fucking puppy did something weird. Actually, she's not a big problem, but she, she's, she is such a fucking amazingly easy dog to train. Uh, even though they're completely physically different, she reminds me of my very first dog, uh, Besa May. She wasn't my first dog I've ever had in my life. My first dog was named something else, but you can't say. Uh, and uh, the thing is, this little dog, if, if I can just in any way communicate in a positive manner, then the thing is that she will try and do the best thing. She's actually really good at playing by herself, like when I don't want to pay attention to her and she has no other dogs to play with. She's totally happy to play with other dogs, and she doesn't piss them off. And she hasn't been killed by any, which is an actual fucking risk, okay? I had a dog that killed a puppy. I'm telling you, you know, I got things to worry about. If it comes to being her... Hi, are you out here? Yeah, you are. Oh, you're so happy, girl. Yeah. I love it. And her, her, her brothers are here. I'm going to call them her brothers. Although they're not genetically related, so... Uh, if there wasn't a massive size difference, I'd, I'd say one of them could be her, her boyfriend or something. But what are you guys doing? 
You was having fun? Sun's going down. And the work is getting done. I'll be as creative as I gotta be to get shit done. I feel so lucky to get to live here. I hope I leave a good legacy and I hope that people remember me when I'm dead. I like that about Dia de los Muertos. I like that a lot. I think that's, you know, that's like a karma I can get into. And I don't mean karma with the whatever colloquial bullshit interpretation you have of it, but, you know, karma, Hinduistic, uh, you know, Eternal original fucking sin. I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of that kind of karma. But I think that if we're good people, hopefully we develop goodwill around us and we help everything and everybody. And wow. Oh, I got a lot more things I got to do. Oh, I got some seeds that are coming up out of a can. It's a tuna fish can. It's very much like one of these little holes in it I'm trying to repurpose them you know what happens when you plant plants in tuna fish cans they mostly just fucking die because you don't have the attention span to pay attention to take care of them but that's not always going to be true is it no it's not it's almost always true hey what are you doing that's fine do that that's fine sorry continue just chewing on a bone I just I gotta be right on her ass all the time I already am worried about slacking off and her dying. I've worried about it many times. She could get killed by someone around here really easy. And the other day, I got back home after I yelled at her to go home and I threw sticks at her. She went back home. I won. And I was so relieved when I got back home and she was still alive. Because it wasn't very far away, okay? And she's really smart. And there's smells everywhere that, you know, are trails for her and... Everything's just fucking fine. But, you know, I'm her dad, in a way, you know? And, uh... Hi, honey. Am I your daddy? Yeah. You stay alive? Yeah. Is this your buddy? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good buddy. <laughs> I'm so happy these big dogs are friends of hers, and I'm so happy she does not go with them on their adventures yet. And I'm hoping she never does. I want her to be a people dog. She is not prepared to be out there in the forest. She will fucking die. And uh, that would just really piss me off immensely. I've already got enough problems, you know. I don't need more problems and things. Hi, honey. How you doing? Why don't you go play with your buddies? Yeah. Good puppy. I uh, try and kick her out as much as I can at night or in the evenings like this. It's not too cold out. It's not even close to too cold out. But I've always known in my head, you know, I've got this app running in there. It says, uh, you know, where's the puppy and what temperature is she? And what temperature she is is actually more important than where she is because... She could be cold or hot anywhere. She's never going to get too hot here, but... Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, fuck. Wow. This kitchen is totally disgusting. That's good to know. Yeah. And I'm hungry again, still. Oh, I have a little bit of uh, cheese left, and I have some tortillas. I think I have some fruit 
I don't know. I'll survive just fine. I got shit to do anyway. Oh, my God. Oh. I wish I could have just laid in bed all day today, but it was fine. I did a little bit of walking around because I had to. Everything's going to work out great. And, uh, anybody who's actually interested in this project and watches these videos and has more in-depth opinions and is willing to back them up with action, totally interested in talking to them because most of the people that talk to me don't have anything to offer and they want everything that they can take. And no, if you were to be here, would you want those people here? You would not. I'm here and I don't want those people here. And so I want to collect people who can take care of themselves, who have done well, who can do well, who can serve well in a variety of ways. No pseudo-spirituality, you know, no pseudo-religion shit, no fucking gurus and numerology and, you know, what's your date of birth and this means that about you. And No, sorry. If you want to observe your rituals, you go ahead and do that. But you should understand that this is not a friendly environment to it, being evangelized or you going on your little power trip with even, even within your own family. Like, I'm not even in favor of, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself a feminist, certainly, considering the absolute polluted nature of that word, but um, I would say that uh, most of the religions that I've studied in practice end up being not very good for women. On the other hand, they are also, so it's kind of a little confusing, but... Um, I would recommend that uh, we remove uh, gender slavery. I'm not going to say gender restrictions because I know people like their gender restrictions. It's fine. It's there's lots of ways you can define yourself by gender and do things. It's all cool, whatever. But uh, like gender slavery exists in a lot of places, and it's really just horrible. And so I think that all of that should get um, destroyed, is what I think. Uh, and, and I think that any person who's a feminist who cares about women would also notice that and also be against it, despite the idea that we want to be in favor of people expressing their culture in various ways, and that's all really cool and shit, right? Because it is. But we have to set some limits, and I would set limits at things like general mutilation, I even include circumcision. Knock it the fuck off, okay? You don't need to cut little boys' dicks off to get off on your little weird fucked up trip. I don't know what kind of God you got or what kind of tripped up fetish you have, but cutting dicks off little boys is not a good idea. And obviously, it's not good for women either, and that's the one people care about, of course, because women are good and men are bad. But uh, female genital mutilation... That's what they call it. With men, they call it circumcision. It sounds nice, doesn't it? Circumcision. We're just circumventing something. Just cutting something off there. I have no idea which one's worse. I, I'm not an expert on it. I think I read about it, but you know what? I didn't like what I read. I don't want to hear it. Don't do it. Just stop doing that shit, okay? We can wash off our genitalia. We can figure out our sexual mores in ways that uh, don't involve us uh, taking the knives to the genitalia of children. And I don't understand why that would ever be controversial. No matter where the fuck you come from, whatever God you think you believe in, okay, reject the God that tells you you have to cut the genitals up of children. Okay, your God's fucked up. Your God's too old, ancient, stupid, and ignorant. Knock it off. Sorry to be a religiously bigoted fuck. I am. You know, and, and religions do change, right? They do change. And just because you did something for a while doesn't mean you have to keep doing it. And that's why you've got, you know, Christianity is split up into like a billion little subcategories over whatever detail there is. There's various forms of Judaism. And I know Jews that don't believe in God, you know. I mean, I, I know Jesuits who don't believe in God. Uh, I haven't known as many Islamic people. I've met them. They've always been very nice and uh, super nice, actually. And I, I actually... Uh, Next time I have a, a, a 
Islamic person here, a Muslim here, I would actually like to interview them. That'd be fun. Actually, I could just do it on webcam. But anyway, uh, there have been a, some that come by, but we never did talk about religion. In general, in this place, in this space, I don't want to talk about religion very much. I don't like it. Um, because I think it becomes a series of cliches that may or may not transfer across cultures and I only care about sort of a universal set of values that we can live by, sort of campground rules, you know, campground rules. And uh, whatever your God thinks, I don't give a shit what your God thinks. Don't even talk to me about it. I don't want to hear about it. If we're sitting around a campfire and you, you, you give me some tequila and uh, you want to tell me about your God... And uh, you're willing to hear what I think, and I'll be very polite, and you better be polite or I'll fucking leave after the tequila's fucking run out. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we can talk, you know. And the thing is, it, it, as long as it's friendly, who cares? But if your God is an evil motherfucker, then we shouldn't be at the same fire anyway. And that is a non-pacifist view, by the way. If you have certain views that are so evil in your society that you're willing to be a destructive force in the world or your own family, relationship, life, community, I try not to think about politics as a solution. It's, it's, it's uh, the worst one. It's a failure of society to have a political solution. What you need is a society of culture, of values surrounding you, of people who are all trying to protect the land, think about the future, uh, protect the children, educate the children, restore the waterways, undo the damage we've done before. And that's the situation we're in. And the other shit, well, neat. You know the list of problems. Make it. Make, make your own list of problems. Or find one. Or use mine. I probably have one. I forgot. Uh, but the, all the list of all the existential threats to humanity, all the list of existential threats to you personally, the things that make you not would even fucking be here and play this game. Many people think that, and some of them check out. And I... Personally, I have thoughts about that. I think it should be easier to check out. Although, right now, if I could kill myself real easy right now, I wouldn't do it. Uh, which, you know, that could change. I need a will. And you uh, plan for legal ownership of the property. It's really important. But even then, I think, uh, you know, I'm feeling better. I can walk more. This whole not walking bullshit in a time of a pandemic without, I had lots of help, and I'm very appreciative of all the help I have. Okay, I can say that over and over. I can say it a fucking thousand times. I appreciate all the help I got. But overall, it was in a fairly remote, setting it for you know a long time being not able to do basic care for myself on a standard that a civilized person would like to have on the other hand luckily i'm not that civilized a person and so i almost don't give a shit <laughs>